Beginning in 1096, Catholic Europeans embarked on quests to retake the Holy Land and spread the faith to new areas of the globe. Spread the faith. Interesting way of saying torturing and killing people who weren't doing anything to you. You would think that in a historical drama like this, we would get a fair portrayal of both sides, with the nuances of the conflict being shown. We don't. The film portrays the Christian Crusaders as bloodthirsty barbarians, while their Islamic opponents are shown as intelligent and peaceful. Let's see. You got the Christians, who were oppressing everyone in their homelands, and then going elsewhere to kill people who believe differently. And then you have the Muslims, who, from Baghdad to Cordova, welcomed all faiths and peoples, formalized mathematics, invented algebra, named the stars, innovated higher education, discovered optics, improved surgery in hospitals, and preserved music in the arts, including works of Greek and Roman scholars that the Christian world had destroyed in their lands. Which is the only reason all of that could be rediscovered in the Renaissance. I think to this guy, fair just means propaganda for his Bronze Age mythology. Now it should be said that Ridley Scott, the director of the film, is an atheist, so we can see why he deliberately decided to portray things this way. No moron! An atheist would consider both Christianity and Islam to be equally bogus. This is just like how you Christians keep crying that you're oh so oppressed because we stopped you from passing laws forcing your nonsense on the rest of us. Maybe, just maybe, He's portraying them that way because that's how they were. Hey, before we go any further, I should point out that this video was requested by Sean Stevens, who actually sent his request by including it in a comment with a PayPal donation. That works too. The portrayal of the Crusades in Kingdom of Heaven reflects how they've been understood by a majority of Westerners for decades. Because that's what happened. Alright, we're not even a minute in, and at this rate I'll be going on for hours if I have to respond to every stupid, ignorant comment he makes. So yeah, we'll be doing a lot of skipping. These two areas used to be Christian. Yeah, and then they converted to Islam, and that just stuck in your craw, didn't it? This led to the Christianization of both the Western and Eastern Roman Empire. Even as the western part of the empire fell to barbarians, Christianity remained. See? You can even tell it from his language! Christianization, as opposed to taking over the government and running it into the ground. And barbarians, instead of people who don't believe the same way we do. As if the Ostrogoths weren't full of artisans and scholars. A lot of them even had laws that could be seen to be transitions between ancient Roman law and Magna Carta. By 900 AD, Islam had expanded, by conquest, all the way to France and southern Italy. If by conquest you mean conversion and coexistence, Christians have very interesting dictionaries. It's just projection. He would have you believe that what happened in the Crusades was really how Islam spread itself, as opposed to how it actually spread itself, which, yeah, there was a lot of military action, but it was mostly through economic trade. The first Muslim dynasties were based on the creation of wealth, not military conquest. They created areas of free trade, centers of culture and science, and networks of merchants, traders, scientists, mathematicians, physicians, and philosophers. Cosmopolitan centers were even spread through the Indian subcontinent all the way to Malaysia and Indonesia. The Islamic Golden Age happened because they made people's lives better. It was the Crusades that put an end to all of that, plunging the area into poverty and economic instability. As a direct result of the Crusades, the Islamic world went from one of civilization to one of radicalization. Islam's so-called Golden Age came at Europe and Christianity's expense. Your own fault. If you'd have traded with them instead of trying to kill them, things would have turned out a lot better. I'm skipping large parts of this video, but suffice it to say it's all a load of ahistorical propaganda. 
I'm looking through it, though, trying to find where he actually defends the Crusades with anything other than Muhammad was a big poopy head. Also, the guy's acting like the Macedonian Renaissance never even happened, as opposed to Christians who from the start had destroyed books beginning with the library at Alexandria. I wonder what his excuse for that is. The Macedonians preserved and copied books, inventing modern paper instead of more expensive parchment, producing the first modern encyclopedias, and worked to increase the literacy of the people. Education was greatly expanded, and intellectuals were encouraged. Art and architecture flourished, laying the seeds for much of the inspiration for the Italian Renaissance. Economically, they encouraged trade and the formation of trade guilds that tended to inhibit the concentration of wealth. Pax doesn't even mention them! This is what Catholic Europeans knew about Islam on the eve of the First Crusade. Muslims were enemies of Christ. And that's really it. They didn't believe the same way they did. The rest is propaganda that is not supported by history. In 1095, the moment had arrived. Pope Urban II called for the First Crusade to retake the Holy Land and drive back Islam. Just what is it that makes you mush-brained throwbacks put such a huge amount of importance on a piece of dirt? It's not even good dirt! I mean, propaganda aside, that's really what the Crusades were about. All of the other things they complained about Muslims doing, they were far more guilty of. But we've got this idea in our heads that this piece of dirt is holy and ours by right, and it's bad that these non-believers are there on our dirt! Yeah, I'm really feeling the Christian love here, gotta tell ya. But seriously, it's all of you! Post-Crusades, it's been Christians, Jews, and Muslims who, to this day, are all waging war over these so-called holy lands. Do you really not see why we atheists don't see religion as anything other than poisoning the mind? In any case, the call for crusade was extremely well received. The news spread through all of Europe like wildfire. Yeah, it's amazing how war does that, isn't it? I mean, we've seen that in our own lifetimes. Iraq, Afghanistan, Iraq again, now Ukraine. It's just a really good way to rile up the stupid masses. All right, let's get to the point where he really starts to show his true colors. The First Crusade could really only be qualified as a roaring success. Crusaders defeated almost every Muslim army they encountered and captured Jerusalem. Yep, might makes right, nothing more. What every intelligent person rejects as psychopathically evil, the defenders of the Crusades embrace wholeheartedly. As long as it's their might, that is. Someone else's might? Horrible barbarianism! One crusade I personally like was the Sixth Crusade. He personally likes it. Gotta love it. Let's put it in perspective. What if, during the American Civil War, France reached an agreement with Britain to get America back as a British colony? Then, supported by France, Britain assassinates Lincoln sticks their own guy in the White House, surrounded by 500 knights and their forces to stop all opposition, then signs a treaty with Britain. Now what would you think about that maneuvering? Because that's exactly what this guy loves so much! Jerusalem was retaken without a single drop of blood being spilled. Pfft, tell that to Nasir Kilij Arslan and everyone else in Hamah. While they didn't succeed in stopping the Ottomans, they did show that Christendom was still capable of uniting to fight common threats in the name of God. Is this guy just completely clueless of how he even sounds? I mean, you've got war after war after war, century after century, with Jerusalem being passed back and forth like herpes at a frat party, and it's all great because it's done in the name of God? And the ironic thing is, the Muslims say exactly the same thing! Despite all of this, some people say the Crusades failed. But did they? What does it matter if they failed or not? Oh, wait, you're a might makes right kind of guy. Forgot that for a second. Ironically, it's only after the Pope lost his power to call Crusades that Christianity started to decline in Europe. And it's all the better for it. 
So thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe, leave a comment, and go to donate.bogosity.tv to keep me doing what I do. And check out all the great content here, like this video selected just for you. Thank you.